let's start with the state of San Francisco's reopening. Where are we now and how confident are you in your plan? Well, San Francisco is in orange and what that means is we're able to open more. We've been able to allow San Francisco restaurants to open indoors at 25% capacity. We've been able to allow churches to open indoor at 25% capacity, not to exceed 100. We've been able to give playgrounds a, a, a date certain of when they can open. Uh, we've been working with our schools and trying to help develop plans. So we're in a better place, but we also have to be very careful and to not move as quickly as people want us to move, mostly because we have to see what happens over the next two weeks as people start to move around. The president, meantime, being hospitalized with COVID-19, another huge twist in this pandemic story. What are your thoughts on the gravity of this development as the leader of a major U.S. city? Well, I, I just think, you know, it, it's, it's unfortunate when anyone gets COVID. And what we hope is that um, people are, especially leaders, are, are leading by example. I don't like wearing masks, but I wear them. I don't like social distancing. I wanna be around people, but I understand that I could infect somebody and they can infect me. So it can't be about me. It has to be about the behavior that I model so that others can follow. They need to understand how significant this is and how it could basically be devastating to a densely populated city like San Francisco. And, and this is important. And so from my perspective, this is why from day one, I have tried to communicate everything I know and the facts and, and use data and the decision making process of, of this virus. And just to remind people like, yes, we want it to be over. We're tired of COVID, but COVID is not tired of us. And it's just not gonna go away because we want it to we have to do our part. Now, many states and cities have been following the president's lead on this and reopened uh, potentially faster than San Francisco did. And I wonder if you think the president's condition will change the way this plays out, change how some of these other cities and states are reacting. Well, I hope it does. Uh, I think that, you know, what it, what it shows people is that no one is immune, that it can happen to anyone at, at any given time. And when you think about, you know, someone who is possibly, you know, elderly and maybe unhealthy, it could be even worse. The impacts of COVID could be devastating. So I hope that this is a wake-up call um, for so many people who are refusing to wear masks and who are moving forward with their lives as if nothing is wrong, as if we're not still in a pandemic. And uh, this should be an example for sure. We're heading into winter months, colder season. Are you at all worried that reopening in San Francisco will lead to a spike in infections and that you will have to pull back? I'm definitely worried about the upcoming flu season and, and the concerns there because, you know, at this time people start getting their flu shots, uh, symptoms start developing for colds. And I think that what's going to happen, people might get it confused with COVID and there might be some, some challenges there. So we're definitely worried uh, we're going to keep an eye on it. Uh, we're doing great with our testing capacity. And so I think that it's important for us to make sure that our healthcare professionals are doing uh, what they can to outreach and to communicate, you know, with the public around, you know, the differences. We've done a lot of campaigning around uh, how to get tested, what you should be looking for, because the goal is we don't want people to panic, but we do want people to know that there's a flu and there's still COVID and we still have a responsibility and a lot of our behavior is going to uh, determine whether or not we are in a situation where we have to close. Meantime, okay. rents are falling sharply in major metropolitan areas and in San Francisco. How concerned are you about a, an economic slowdown in San Francisco given that uh, tech companies are pairing back workers and people are leaving the city and that means you're gonna have a lower tax base? Well, I will say that I'm very concerned. Uh, I just balanced a, a budget with a $1.5 billion budget deficit. Uh, and not to mention, there are over 200,000 people who have filed for unemployment in this city. We have businesses that I've been going to since I was a kid that have closed permanently. So I am definitely concerned about the economic uh, impacts of, of what's happening. It's, it's not about just tech companies fleeing, it's about 
uh, business in general uh, in light of uh, COVID and working from home and having more flexibility and the cost of living and also the, the number of tax measures and other things that uh, have really put us in a situation where I think we're going to have some challenges over the next couple of years. But the fact is, we're San Francisco. We're a major city and people love coming to the city. They love working in the city. They love going to restaurants in the city. And so you can't just create this someplace else in a suburb. You only get what you can get from a place like San Francisco by being in a place like San Francisco. It's going to be hard for us for some time, but I think eventually we'll get back to a better place. Now, some businesses and restaurants are saying, look, 25% capacity, the math doesn't work out. We have to bring staff back in. We have to pivot back from the delivery and takeout model that we've been you know, working on for the last several months. Actually, this could be worse for our revenue or make things more challenging as we're just trying to survive here. What do you, what's your response to that? I'm not saying that we're going to take away the tables and the parklets and, and the innovative ways in which we've allowed restaurants to operate in San Francisco because of COVID. We're just adding additional space. So for example, there's a restaurant that has put pretty much their entire operation outside. Their capacity is actually going to increase by opening 25% indoors because they have such a small space. But in other cases, it, it will be challenging. Um, so we're not taking away anything, we're adding to. And so it is still probably going to be hard for so many of these restaurants, but as soon as we have an opportunity to allow them to open even, even further, then we will do that. And I want to also um, just mention, we extended the cap um, on the delivery fees uh, so that the delivery uh, companies, they can't charge more than a certain per deliveries. Uh, it was supposed to expire as restaurants began to reopen indoors. We've extended that uh, so that we can give restaurants more opportunities to recoup their costs. Now, I want to talk to you about schools because as a working mom with kids learning from home, I've definitely heard some people say, why are they opening movie theaters and not schools yet? Why? I want to be clear that the schools have guidance on when they can open. And so, in fact, elementary schools can open now, middle schools are next, and high schools are after that. And we are working with the school district, um, and ultimately it is their decision. It is their decision, even when we provide guidelines, even when we provide them a definitive date, which was definitely before movie theaters, um, but the school district uh, working with the teachers union, working with trying to make sure that people are safe and other testing capacities, uh, they are still uh, trying to figure this out. Now, Mayor, you and I first spoke when you were like two months into this job, and now you are two years mm -hmm. into this job, and I don't think anybody would have expected what the world would throw us and you. Um, what is your vision for, for San Francisco coming out of this crisis? What do you think normal looks like on the other side, and what will be forever changed about the way the city runs? Well, I don't know what normal is anymore. Uh, this is, you know, I, I'm used to talking to a computer screen now. I don't get to see people. I can't socialize the way I love to socialize. Just imagine a mayor who likes to be in the public and talking to people and hanging out. And, and that's just something that can't happen um, like it used to. Uh, but I, I do have a, a vision for this city. And that is uh, to try and do everything we can to make sure that we aggressively build more housing that we get our unhoused residents off the streets into permanent housing. That is really, I, I want people to walk down the streets of San Francisco and think, wow, there's something different about this city. It feels good. It smells good. It looks good. The environment is friendly. I want this to be one of the most welcoming, clean, green cities in the world because People love San Francisco, and we have a lot of work to do to get it there. 